you are and who you know is just as important as what you're able to do and so understanding that if you want to really develop yourself you will want to get clarity around how you want to represent yourself to the people around you right um, and personal branding has had a lot of coverage in the last couple of years it's you know it's a big buzz term there's a, there's a lot of information out there about it but one of the things that's not explained about personal branding is you don't have to be a marketer you do not have to be an extrovert uh, you do not have to spend lots of money uh, on creating a personal brand creating a personal brand is really about you defining who you are and how you want to be known in the world hello everyone Welcome back to my channel. I'm Cornelia Zegel. I'm the leader of Global Women Club in Frankfurt. For those who are new here, this channel is mostly about the leadership and personal growth. If you want to reach out to the next level, please stay tuned because I highly believe those videos and interviews will inspire you to transform and grow. Hello everyone, welcome you in my second uh, uh, episode, actually uh, another episode for today. We're having a special guest uh, for today who is going to talk about the branding and we're going to tap into the whole concept about the branding and especially personal branding. Joanna James, welcome you in my podcast for today. Thank you, Cornelia. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, actually, I should say good afternoon because you are in Australia, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm on the other side of the planet, but it's just wonderful to be here. We made the time zones work, so that's even better. Awesome. Uh, Jonna, we had a really nice conversation in our uh, last meeting in Frankfurt when we talk about uh, branding, you know, especially for the personal branding. Uh, that's why today I would like to tap into that concept with you and bring into uh, our audience more about that because um, you are a very successful lady. Uh, before we start, let me quickly introduce uh, our guest speaker. Joanna James is a mother, she's a founder, she's a, a author and creator. A creator in many aspects because she's having a professional background in banking, but she had a strong desire to contribute more uh, being in corporate, uh, launching her own business. You know, she has a brand, uh, the success woman, where she's sharing um, all the wisdom uh, for the entrepreneurial women as well. But not only that, uh, she's known in Australia as the youngest female uh, architecture and the builder. Uh, she's also a pioneer entrepreneur who led the international ease. You can say more <laughs> how powerful that piece is. Joanna, she's also uh, featured in uh, publications. So as I mentioned, she's the author. And not even mentioning that, uh, uh, awarded lady. So almost 32 uh, awards. And her big passion is, like I was mentioning, uh, supporting women uh, in the entrepreneurial journey. So that's why uh, she is the right person to talk about branding and how to do that uh, from our professional perspective, uh, from the corporate and also from the entrepreneurial perspective. Joanna, welcome you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that, Cornelia. Thank you. Um, Joanna, my question uh, to you is, because when we had a discussion, uh, ladies actually asked, do I need really personal branding? You know, what does it mean, personal branding for you and what you can share, especially as, as a leader, you know, because... Uh, People sometimes in the, who are in the corporate, who are the leaders, they might think, hmm, I don't really don't need a personal branding. What for should I build and focus really on, on a personal branding? Yeah, so personal branding is a wonderful opportunity for women in many areas. So if you are currently working for a, a company or particularly in corporate, um, you will definitely want to focus on your personal brand. And I'm just going to explain to you why. Mm -hmm. So 
One of the things that I noticed after many years of working with up and coming leaders and people moving within our organization and within organizations generally is who you are and who you know is just as important as what you're able to do. And so understanding that if you want to really develop yourself, you will want to get clarity around how you want to represent yourself to the people around you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And personal branding has had a lot of coverage in the last couple of years. It's, you know, it's a big buzz term. There's There's a lot of information out there about it. But one of the things that's not explained about personal branding is you don't have to be a marketer. You do not have to be an extrovert. Uh, You do not have to spend lots of money uh, on creating a personal brand. Creating a personal brand is really about you defining who you are and how you want to be known in the world. And doing that as you progress through your leadership transition is going to be really core to do. You want people to have an impression and a memory and understanding of who you are that matches up with the real you. So that when you're in circumstances at work and when there's opportunities that arrive, people have you front of mind as the right person to choose. So if you're working within a company, it's really important to understand that you must develop your own personal brand. And whether we like it or not, Cornelia, We have a personal brand by design or by default, right? So you can either choose to participate and to create yours in a powerful way, or you can let that opportunity pass by you. So definitely for those ladies that are still within corporate, having a personal brand is a must. For anybody that's a entrepreneur and has already stepped out, your personal brand is just as important as the business brand. And they need to be in alignment and they need to have clarity. And as a leader, you need to understand how your brand and how your energy and your influence is being received by other people. And that's going to be a very important part of your business journey. And then, of course, the third category, Cornelia, is people that choose their personal brand to become a business in their own right. So, you know, they could be, you know, individual solopreneurs who are the brand, right? So your personal brand is your brand, is the business. And this is the third aspect of where having a really personal brand is important. But essentially, I don't know any woman on the planet that doesn't need to have a personal brand. So ladies, if you haven't had a chance to think about how to create one for you, now's your time to do so. And hopefully, you know, in this conversation with Cornelia, we can take away some of the more intimidating aspects around what branding really is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Joanna, you have mentioned about we are as, as we present ourselves. So can we maybe talk a little bit more uh, kind of breaking that one uh, into kind of uh, kind of patterns and elements which we should look for that? I remember in our discussion uh, when we had in the club, you mentioned about few elements, the like voice, appearance, and, and also the concept, which is not really visible as such, but more inside us. Uh, I would like to go in the avenue of, of the values, you know what I mean? Like, uh, among us, among what we never sacrifice for, you know, can we can we get a little bit of glimpse of that, like uh, like you have been sharing uh, uh, with with previous meeting. I mean, um, with us. Yeah, absolutely. So, what I like to think about personal branding is it's more personal being, right? So, at the core of any personal brand is who you are. And so it's a a fantastic opportunity for you to do some personal development work and really understand, you know, who are you as a woman? So what do you value? What are your values in life and what order do you have them in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are your strengths? What are the things that you're naturally good at doing? Right. Like people say, gee, you're just amazing how you do that. You do that so easily. Right. What are the the goals and the passions that you have in life? Are there any particular things that you would like to achieve, whether it be this year or next year, 10 years time or even lifetime goals? What are the things that are really, really important to you? And finally, a very strong personal brand, the, the person and the woman at the center of that always has a really clear understanding of what's your purpose? So what? 
you're here on planet earth why are you here what did you come to do what's unique about you so the first thing you want to go through when you're thinking about your personal branding is really spending time to get in touch with you this is not something that you can go and outsource to another person you can't hire a, a, a marketer or a digital agency they can help you with the tactics but mm -hmm. you have to be clear on what's driving it what are the principles behind how you want to present to the world what do you believe in what do you feel passionately about these are all the things that will drive your branding and there are four key elements that you'll want to create when you get clear on that. And the first one is you'll want to understand your personal message. And all of us have a personal message, right? It's, it's like, what is it that you want to say to the world? Can you encapsulate that in a single sentence? If you were to leave the people that you meet remembering just one thing about you, what would it be? What's the type of personal message that you want to leave with the people that you meet? The next one is, as you intimated, having, you know, your personal voice, right? How do you use your voice? We're all given a voice. It's an incredible tool for expression. How do you want to use it? Are you confrontational? Are you supportive? Are you excitable? Are you loud? Are you quiet? Are you soft? Are you compassionate? What type of voice do you want to bring to who you are in the world? And I know, you know, in our role in The Successful Woman, I've seen so many women that, as they go through this process of really understanding themselves, they find their voice and they realize that they haven't been communicating who they are in a way that they truly want to in the world. And the next one is your, your personal essence. So I always like to describe essence um, going back to my architecture days. So whenever we would create a design project, you need to have something that's a clarifying concept that ties the entire process through from initial design idea through the construction of the drawings into the implementation of the building and the actual experience, the reality of the building that we would create. And every person is similar in the sense that you have a personal essence. So what's the quality? What's the feeling that you have? that it doesn't matter what happens in your life, it's at the core of you. It's who you really are. It's, it's how people feel when they meet you. And understanding your personal essence is a really powerful thing to do because it's that intangible thing that when people meet you, they're like, oh, I can't quite put my finger on that, but I know how I felt when I met her. Or when I'm around that person, I just felt happy because she's so joyous. Or when I was around that woman, I felt empowered because she was so powerful. She was dynamic. She was courageous, right? So really understanding your essence is very, very important to do. And then these are all things that are generated from the inside out, right? Your, your, your essence being the core of who you are, your message in terms of what you want to say, your voice, how you want to say it, how you want to use your voice, and then your personal style. So as women, we love fashion. So think about your personal style as your personal fashion on steroids. How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? How do you want to dress? How do you want to wear your hair? What's the feeling that you want people to have when they interact with you, when they meet you in the first few seconds? And we all know how important first impressions are. And so being really clear on your style is going to help you with your personal brand, particularly those of you in corporate environments where you are representing yourself every day. And I know so many people you know, fell into the trap with using Zoom so much and not meeting people in person. But it's really important that you dress for the woman that you truly are and the person that you want to be not how you think other people should have you show up, but that you're expressing yourself. Are you colourful? Are you classy? Are you casual? Are you edgy? What is your personal style and how do you want that to stay? So you really go on this deep dive, Cornelia, of getting to the heart of who you are and asking yourself lots of clarifying questions because when you're clear about who you are as a woman, you can then craft your style, your message, and your voice because you're clear on your essence. 
from that place, then you can have a look at how you want to brand yourself, right? And this may or may not be the things that you post online. It might be just how you hold yourself in meetings. It could be how you introduce yourself to people. It could be a book that you choose to write. It could be a multiplicity of things, but you can apply it to anything that you choose to do. And that's why a personal brand is so powerful to do, but it's not as easy as just painting it from the outside. It's, it really is a deep dive, wholehearted exploration of who am I and how do I want to present myself to the world? Yeah, I, I love that. And I remember when we had a discussion, uh, it was one of our guests invited into uh, the, the, the meeting and she was their photographer. And I love what you just mentioned because it's kind of a journey. And what is really fascinating is it's not, like you just mentioned, it's not a facade thing which we see outside. It's more the discovery piece. And once we uncover or I'll tackle uh, all these elements, it's way easier because we feel just comfortable, you know, the way how, how we are. And But it's how was it in your case, um, uh, Joanna? Uh, was it something which was um, like a process wise or it was pretty pretty easy or it was like kind of growing with with the whole journey you know because you you mentioned I can just picture that you are the builder from inside out like connecting with people from the design perspective as an expertise and also turn to the entrepreneurial world so how that journey looks in in your perspective yeah oh my goodness where to start <laughs> So, you know, the first thing I want to say is wherever you are on the timeline of the journey, that's perfectly okay. And there's also plenty of time. And if you haven't started, there's no time like today, right? So, you know, it definitely is a journey over time. And I think, you know, if I look back on my career and my professional development, whether it be within companies or within, you know, entrepreneurial or even within the thought leadership space, you know, the, it wasn't always easy, the things that I had to travel through. But the process, and I think this is a really important one for lots of women to understand how to do, is your life is a collection of lots of experiences, so my, my career is incredibly varied. It goes from architecture to banking to, you know, doing mentoring for women. There's all sorts of things. You know, I've created buildings. I've had children. I've, you know, done all sorts of incredible things. But they all add up to who I am. And so I think what a lot of people do is that they make the mistake of thinking, I'm only going to choose the best parts of me. I'm only going to choose the parts that I want people to see. And so what happens is that parts are left behind and they're not integrated into you. And that's not to say that you need to share deeply personal things with everybody that you meet, but you need to come to a point where it's integrated within you, right? And that means all the things that worked, all the things that didn't work too, and really coming to terms with that entire journey, that, that whole transformation of making meaning of, you know, why did all of these things happen for me? And eventually what will happen is you'll realise that just like a kaleidoscope, there's nobody on the planet like you. There is not another single soul that's exactly like you. Your unique experience of life, your unique understanding, your skills, your abilities, there is no one like you. And that's the essence of the personal brand is to really gather all of those parts of you as assets of who you are and realize that the way in which they combine are very unique, very unique. And that's an absolute strength. And so in my own journey, you know, I went from, you know, starting my career as being the best employee. I mean, if you needed something done, you gave it to me. I was always in the office on Saturday morning getting it done, right? I always took on way more responsibility, like for my age and my experience. You know, it was just like, it was incredible. You know, I was the perfect employee. And then my, my ex-husband, he was an incredible entrepreneur. So then I went on this amazing entrepreneurial journey, but I was in operations. I was in the back office. I was with the people, right? So I had to really rally the team. I did a lot of leadership work and I was in the back of the office making it work, you know, building the nuts and bolts of the business and making it happen. And then I trans transitioned 
into this phase where I realized, okay, it's time for me to step out on the stage. You know, I have to pull the curtain back and it's time for me to step out on the stage. And I, and I uh, was given the GM permission, uh, position. I started to speak in the industry, you know, and I started to really work on who am I, how do I want to show up and what do I want to say? And I remember one of the confronting exercises I was given to do was a video every day for 270 days. Wow. And, and that process was amazing for me. By hook or by crook, whether I wanted to or not, I had to show up every day and have something to say. And that process was very transformative. And it made me realize that, you know, it's as much about getting comfortable with the mediums that you use as it is about just accepting where you're at and being willing to show up and tell the truth. <laughs> and so that process was a wonderful one for me. And then I realized that, you know, the branding is really important part of business because people, they want to engage with people that they like and they trust. And, you know, People's attention span is so short these days. I mean, we're just bombarded with information. And I think that the stats say it's, it's within the first three seconds, people are making up their mind about you. And they're looking at the consistency of who you are and how you present. Do you show up in the same way again and again? Are you consistent? Are you not consistent? Is your message changing? And, you know, I want to encourage all of you that if you're working on who you are and your message, that's okay. That's a part of the journey that you're willing to show up and share who you are and what it is that you want to say. And it's also important for people to see that development in you because ultimately that's what they want to do too. People want to grow and they want to develop. And so you don't have to have it all figured out at the beginning and you don't have to have everything perfect. And it's okay for people to look back on what you did a year ago or two years ago and think, wow, hasn't you come a long way, right? Mm -hmm. um, that is actually okay. So, so, you know, put aside any preconceived ideas that you have to have it all figured out before you start. You just have to start and refine as you go, right? So I would really encourage you just to take action. Um, and But as you do, really bring your consistency of thought around, well, how am I showing up? You know, is it congruent with what I was doing yesterday? Am I improving on what I'm doing yesterday? Am I varying or is something changing about my message and what I want to say? And I'll, I'll give a, a classic example of this, Cornelia, I had a young gentleman who was one of the up and coming leaders in our company and he was amazing with his skill level, but he had a lot to learn and he was given the opportunity to start to you know, present at the leadership level and his physical appearance just didn't match, you know, and I had to say to him, you know, I, you really need to think about, you're telling me that you want people to give you responsibility. They want to give you autonomy. They want to trust you with, with parts of the company, but you look scruffy, right? Oh. Your hair is not done. Your shirt's not ironed. I'm like, you know, it's superficial, but it matters, right? It, it matters because what you say is not how you're showing up and there's an incongruency there, Right. And that doesn't mean that, you know, just because you wear a nice suit and tie or you've got a professional dress on that you've got the goods. You have to have the goods too, but you can't have something that's incongruent, right, or separates you because it causes a disconnect in people and then they're less likely to trust you, right, because there's something about what's going on that, that, that doesn't match, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that was just a, a, a funny example that happened for me and, it was interesting to watch him grow and change. Um, and as he changed what he was wearing, he also began to change how he spoke with people too. And did you know, I mean, this is, this is amazing. There's actually scientific research, it's called enclosed cognition. Uh -huh. And it's scientifically proven that we will change how we are relative to the clothes that we're wearing. So they did a scientific experiment of people that were in lab coats. Mm -hmm. And what they found was that the work that people did while they were wearing lab coats was more accurate and precise. Mm -hmm. So just by changing the clothes that you're wearing, you identify your identity with yourself in a different way. 
So if you want to change the perception of who you are and how you show up, changing your clothes is a very powerful way to do that. So if you want to be that next CEO, dress like her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to be that next leader, you know, speak like her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are really important things to do. Yeah. Absolutely. I love the, 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 the concept which you are, uh, these nuggets which you are sharing with our audience, because this is very important. And like you mentioned, we as a human having a tendency, like neglect everything which is kind of bad what happened to us, you know, I don't know, divorce, failure, uh, whatever. But at the end of the day, like you mentioned, all these elements, they are making a difference because they are growing, they are pushing us uh to, I think, do the homework, let's put it in that way. It's like a lessons which we need to make and, and, and see and reflect. And this is what majority of people, I would say, they are forgetting. And if you look on the successful people, this is what I realized. If you look on the successful people, they are acknowledging all the downs which sometimes uh, they had in the life, you know, because it's obvious. It's it's not a, a sunny day all the time. Sometimes it's a rainy, sometimes it's a grayish. But what those successful people they did, and um, whoever mark, uh, they really embrace it, uh, those stuff like you like you explained. So I really love that concept, uh, Joanna. I would like to move um, to the next element actually, which is I would say the next stage when uh, you are contributing more because you are supporting women in the in terms of entrepreneurial journey because you believe that. Uh, if you are there, if women is there, could contribute more. It's not that we're neglecting the one who are having a fixed job or stable job, not at all. It's a completely different level. Can we talk about it, uh, how that influenced you personally, uh, the concept which you can contribute? And at the same time, how this uh, business piece is also correlating uh, as a next level with the personal branding? Because... Is it something which we should look differently, like services, product, which we are launching, uh, or not as such, you know? Yeah. So, you know, as I said, in my own journey of collecting all the pieces of me and mm -hmm. all the variety of experience that I had, I reached a point in my life, having gone through, you know, some major traumas. I went through a divorce. Everything changed for me. My whole understanding of who I was, why I did what I did, what I wanted to do in the world completely changed. Um, and so I went through a period of really deep discovery around who I was and what I wanted to do. And I had always come from very male-dominated environments. So I you know, cut my teeth on construction sites, you know, pouring concrete. And I had been in you know, high-level banking boardrooms where I was the only woman in the boardroom. And that was a lot of my professional experience was, was really doing that. And, and I loved working with, with guys and I love leading men and I'm very good at leading men. But what I realized is that there are so many ladies out there that need support. And whether it be the foundations of really understanding where your sense of self-confidence comes from and how to be resilient when you have knockbacks and what it is that you really want to contribute to the world and how you can make a difference to the world. And there's not a woman that I met, you know, in the last couple of years, and I've talked with thousands of women and helped so many women, that at the core of it hasn't wanted two things. And, and that is this, this deep desire to create a lifestyle for her family. Now, her family can be, you know, can be her immediate parents, it can be her husband, it can be her children, it can be her fur babies, her partner, whatever the context of family is, women are really driven with mo pretty much everything we do is driven to support our family. And so there's this lifestyle piece that's really important to most women, whether they're working for companies or starting their own businesses. The second thing is, is female entrepreneurs are the fastest growing sector of entrepreneurs on the planet. Okay, and we've gone through a lot of changes lately with the pandemic and people realizing that, hey, you know, 
my old way of working doesn't suit me anymore. Um, I've had to pivot and change. Uh, I want to have a different type of experience where I can spend more time with kids or I don't want to travel to an office anymore. So I want to create my own thing. Or you just happen to be like a woman that's got amazing skills. It's time for you to step out as, as I did, step onto the stage and go, you know what? I'm going to give this a go and I'm going to do it for myself, right? But one of the things that, you know, I've come to realize as a successful woman is there's a gap, right? And, and just like so many foundational success skills, which are not taught in school, they're not taught in universities. And I mean, yes, you can find them online, but finding really quality information and people who really know their stuff, that's something different entirely. And, you know, I know when I came across, you know, my mentors, my whole life changed as a result of that. And I was really able to integrate all those pieces of me and, and, you know, really defined what it was that I needed to do daily to become the woman that I secretly wanted to be, right? Because inside, we all have this secret dream. It's like the woman that we really want to be. And one of the things around that woman that I find talking to many women is, it's about contributing back. It's about actually changing the world. And so helping female entrepreneurs grow their companies is a very effective way to create change in the world, right? With the people that we hire, the products and services that we supply, and just the way that we go about doing business differently. Mm -hmm. And I think we would all agree, there's a lot of changes that the world needs right now, okay? And so there's a fantastic need for, for women to, to get out there and create this change. And this also can, can bring fantastic lifestyle changes, both in terms of, you know, whether it be the the income or the changes or having more time for your kids. But if you don't actually understand how to grow a business, there's this gap in between. So what happens is females step out, they start their company, they're doing really well, and then they realize, oh, my goodness, I'm stuck. I'm at the center of my business. The business has got me trapped. I'm working longer hours than ever, and the reasons that I started it seem a long way away. And so you have to realign it in a very unique way, and that's what we do at The Successful Woman. We help female entrepreneurs really bridge that journey of being an entrepreneur into becoming a successful founder and a woman that's grown her company, and a woman whose business is revolving around her, is supporting her lifestyle, and is helping her contribute to the world in a way that's meaningful, right? It's not just about making money. Yes, having money is important, but it's about doing it in a way that you feel fulfillment by. And that's ultimately what the woman inside is always craving, is, you know, I want to be that dream woman that's living a fulfilling life. And how do you how do you go through that process and do that? Mm -hmm. Awesome, and you are absolutely right because um, it's so it's it's well, like you said, it's it's not easy to find the good mentors who can navigate you towards this uh, storm. Let's put it that way. But it's way easier, and I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. And what you know, out of that is coming one conclusion to me. Uh, if you agree with me, like ladies. Go, go go and find and search don't be afraid that you are because it's very common tendency that we are getting overwhelmed we are contributing contributing but then we are realizing it's too much number plates and now it's like a drowning effect isn't it so it's good to be um uh going out and finding the the community mentor and people like you who might also help uh women in that journey i love that concept yeah. yeah, absolutely. Someone said to me once, you'll be surprised who will help you if you just ask. Okay. And at the time, there was this incredible uh, businessman and I wasn't sure whether it was okay, whether I asked, you know, hey, would you know, I'd be able to spend some time from you. I just want to learn from you. Um, and I asked and he said, yes. And still to this day, years later, I just catch up with him every now and then. I tell him what I'm doing. He, he you know, he gives me another perspective, another point of view. And I, I've actually got like several mentors that I work with, right? And so I've realized that the more you can invest in finding people around you that have already gone through the process that you're embarking on, 
then the easier it will be for you to understand what you really need to do so that you don't have to spend a lot of time doing that. So you get access to their years and years of knowledge, but you want to make sure that they're people that have actually done what it is you want to do. So you can have mentors in your health life, in your business life, in your relationship life, you know, wherever they be, but you want to consciously create like your team, your team of mentors to guide you. And if there's one thing you take out of this conversation today, it would be that. And don't be afraid to ask. Just just ask people, can they help you? You know, some will be paid. Some will do it just because they actually want to contribute back. And I know I do. I, I go through many programs where I contribute women just because I want to help them. Okay, awesome. Uh, Joanna, can you share the story which actually it turned in a super surprising element, you know, from your mentor perspective, like a little hint maybe how you find it, how you connected, maybe the one which was paid, maybe the one which was kind of for free, like like kind of inspiration because, of course, it's so common. We need our mentors, of course. But when it's coming to the searching and action plan, how to do that? Can you maybe share your story from your experience? Yeah. So, look, like anything, you want to you want to break it down, right? And you want to work out, well, what's the main area of my life that I want to work on right now? So as I said, you know, I went through a very challenging time. And one of the first people that I wanted to mentor me was around mindset, right? Because mentally I needed to unpack what had happened, how had this been created, what do I need to change, how was I thinking? You know, I, I went back, I learned all about the subconscious mind and, and how to do things. So, you know, at that time, I learned from the best of the best. I went and did lots of Tony Robbins, right? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So he, he he was the first one, right? That that I really that I really learned from, and you know I really saw him as a as a mentor for me, and I you know dived in deep and and really immersed myself. And what was amazing about that was that you know as you make the commitment to do you know educational and development courses, you also meet another amazing people around you. And so I went on after that to really consciously invest in specific personal development courses that I felt were going to benefit me. So I went on and did a lot of money mindset work. Um, I met some incredible friends in that process. The uh, facilitator of that was the gentleman that I wanted to approach, and he just became a very high-level business mentor for me. Uh, I wanted when I got on my feet and then I wanted to reinvest financially, I I engaged another mentor uh, around uh, around property and buying property. Uh, I've also, you know, had to do a lot of speaking and presentation skills. So, you know, I, I invested in that. But probably the most powerful mentoring story for me is actually when um, Ron Maholtra, the the founder of The Successful Woman, agreed to mentor me. And this is an amazing story. So everybody gets to a point in your life when you will realise, okay, it's time for me to change. Uh And the only person that can make changes in your life is you, right? So you have to be ready for it, right? The pain has to be at a level that you go, okay, This isn't working in my life. I'm going to create change and I'm willing to do something new. So I had um, never really, I met Ron uh, at one of the first kind of events that I went through and I was suffering depression at the time and it was winter and I was swimming in the pool. I was using cold water therapy to help, you know, help me with depression. And I remember one day after getting in the swimming pool and doing laps and freezing cold water, I I got out of the pool and I walked inside and I said to my daughter, who was about 13 at the time, I said, honey, I'm going to get myself a mentor. It's time for me to change. And I literally went upstairs and rang Ron and said, Ron, I realized that I need to do more work on myself. Stuff with Tony was great. It got me going, but I need ongoing and I need individual support. You know, what do you think? Because I knew he had a business where he was mentoring men. And he said, well, I can help you with that. I said, do you mentor women? He said, yes. I said, okay, amazing. So the conversation was, what do I have to do to have you mentor me? Because I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of my journey with Ron. 
We then went through, he took me through a whole series of success principles. Uh, I then went through a thought leadership program with him and he's still a, you know, business mentor, you know, for me today within the context of successful women. So I really have to just stop and acknowledge Ron for being somebody in my life that actually showed up when times were difficult for me, right? You know, I'd had incredible success. I had a credible collapse. It was a really difficult time. He's always believed in me. And not only that, I was watching the incredible change in his own uh, development and the growth in his companies and the amazing thing he was doing in the world. And he was really walking the walk. He was the real McCoy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And so over the years of him mentoring me, I just continue to have the utmost respect for him as a human being. And I think that you will bring different mentors into your life at different times some will be paid because they've got a specific skill that you're wanting to learn. Some will be free, like the business coach that, that I had where I just asked him if he would mentor me and I, I catch up with him, you know, every, every couple of months or if I need something specific, I just reach out to him and ask for help. And others will be people that will take you on the journey of your own growth. Um, and so, you know, I can, I can share, you know, over the last couple of years, Uh, the successful woman was doing a lot of work in India and the there's nothing more satisfying being a mentor than seeing the incredible change that can happen for for people that you work with and you know the the reward that you get is not always a monetary reward it's just a deeply satisfying thing to be able to help people change their life for the better it is just an incredible process to to go through so You know, I've seen the ladies, you know, get better jobs, negotiate better salaries, leave leave corporate altogether and start their own companies. I've seen them, you know, improve their health, be more happy, all sorts of results. Um, And, you know, as a mentor, you really want to understand when you're engaging them, why are they why are they choosing to mentor you? Is this somebody that's just a commercial transaction? They're going to teach me some skills. Or is this somebody that's actually really invested in you? Because mentoring is different to coaching. It's very, very different, right? Mentoring is really about the whole of you and helping you in a particular area, but also being able to spot your blind spots. Yes. (laughs) And call them out when you need them to, yeah? Absolutely. And actually, you pulled whole curtains when we start from the personal branding, which is the, the top of the iceberg, you know, like creme de la creme. And like through the journey, which we just uh, show to our audience, there is really the work which needs to be done. Let's, 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 let's face it, even all the big mentors like Tony Robbins, they did incremental job on themselves to contribute and give that value. And then it's easy peasy, you know, uh, so because marketing agency just doing the te- technical things based on the product which is already ready. And we, I don't want to use uh, comparison with we as a product, but the whole work, which is like manufacturing, like shaping, uh, polishing the character, uh, the personality. I think this is all about it. And uh, later on, um, it's contributing to, to your business, what you do, uh, isn't it? It's like almost natural thing for you it's it's you don't have to ask because remember one of our ladies um on the meeting asked look i'm having my products i'm having my services but uh, should i look on a personal brand strategy different <laughs> and it was completely I, yeah what did you reply uh for that one yeah so I'll, I'll i'll give a classic example of this so in the in the non-bank lending business that we grew we were a challenger brand So we were a small, innovative business. We represented brokers' rights. We were all about championing independence, freedom, and alternative to main banking, right? And we would often go to industry events and, you know, we were were quite well known because when we went to industry events and we did the conferences, we always did something that was challenging, right? We always went to the edge. We, you know, we had interesting booths. We we put on interesting conversations. We were never boring. We were always pushing the edge, right? Because it fitted with our brand. But the CEO, my ex-husband, you know, he at that time was representing the business and he was absolutely stalwart for standing up and telling it how it is. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so his personal brand of being somebody that was congruent, that wasn't afraid to speak his mind, that was willing to challenge status quo, stand up for other people's rights, his personal brand matched the company brand as an innovator, right? And you couldn't have had, if you had a CEO get up on stage and be meek and mild, it wouldn't have matched the business brand, Mm -hmm. right? Now, that's just naturally who he was. And there was a congruency, right? But you really do need to think about if you're representing as the leader of a business, whether it's a product or whether it's a service that you offer, how are you resonating? Are people going to interact with you and think, oh, wow, yeah, I can really see her congruent with the product that she's selling. When she speaks, I get that she's speaking authentically around what it is that she chooses to do and why this product's so important. Or do they get that it's a front and that it's fake, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why you really need to think about, okay, how? what are the aspects of my personal brand and how does my personal brand align with the business brand? What are the aspects that are similar and, and how, how are they linked? Because you can't separate the two. Otherwise, there's going to be a disconnect and people are not going to want to engage with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like you mentioned, uh, People they're going to feel it if it's if it's fake, is it real? Uh, this is something which okay, you can have the best tactics to manipulate in terms of psychology, but then with a time it's going to be uh depleted. And they're going to figure out. So there is really like short path uh, not doing that. So I, I like this really that you are emphasizing that very clearly because this, that one is also giving the answer. For the leaders, uh, maybe who are still in the corporate or the one who are having their own business, just step back and think about it. Is it aligned? Is it something what I need to find? And sometimes maybe it's the chance or way just to step out because it's not aligned who I am, you know, to standing out for this is also possible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if if you come to the realization that the business that you're representing doesn't match your personal values. Well, two things are going to happen. One, you're probably going to be cringing on the inside because every day when you're representing that company, it's not who you are. It's not It's not within the truth of how you want to live in the world and it must be uncomfortable to do, right? The second one is that, you know, if you are a leader or working for different businesses, you're going to become known by the values that you represent within those industries, right? So if you represent... If you get known by a value structure that's not who you are, when you go to leave that company, then people are going to remember you by where you were and what they did, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to work doubly hard to, you know, evidence to them that actually that was a mismatch. Maybe that's why I left, right? But if you stay there long enough, that's where you'll be remembered by. You'll be remembered as being a part of that organisation. So if the organisational values are not in alignment with who you are, long-term, it's not going to serve you. It's not going to serve you for your career progression and it's not going to serve you in terms of just your general happiness and enjoying what you do. So if your organisation doesn't have clear values that you feel are, and, you know, companies can espouse values and then companies can actually embody values. Uh And they're two different things. Just because there's a set of values written on a corporate profile doesn't mean that they're experienced within the company. And this is another reason why, as a leader, it's so important because if your business has a set of values, everybody in that organisation is looking to whether you embody them. And If you embody them, then you bring it into the company culture and it becomes an asset in the company. It can help growth. It can help all sorts of things. But if the values are just on a piece of paper and you're not really demonstrating those values, then it's it's shallow, it's hollow, and, and people won't buy that. And there's a massive change, particularly with the younger people coming through. People want to do something meaningful in the world. You know, people don't want to just sign up to do things the way they've always done things, right? Just because someone says you're great doesn't mean you are, right? And people are going to look under the hood and they're going to actually question, do you actually walk the walk or are you just talking the talk, right? 
And that's why it's so important to be really clear on your branding and having your branding from the inside out so that no one can ever call into question whether you're presenting in a way that's really authentically you or whether you're just presenting something superficial because you want people to buy an idea of who you are. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is what I'm also observing with the new generation, you know, uh, um, bringing or hiring people into, into the team. Uh, the, the young generation, uh, we don't want, I don't want to name it X or Y or whatever, but what is very common for them, um, it's really uh, not the authority which you, which we have as a leader, not really the way how we are treating people, the way how we're living, what is the quality life which we believe. And that one, which is absolutely making sense because all of this is having a indirect impact uh, the way how we build the relationship, how we operate, how we solving the problems, how we transitioning uh, through difficult times like COVID or pandemic, you know, how to how to navigate to others. And basically, like you um, uh, expressed to Joanna, everything is coming from the bottom of uh, who we are. If we know that, uh, if we did that homework on us or with us, uh, um, before so that one would be way easier to slightly adding all these little elements like we just mentioned pulling another mentor pulling another uh, person who might help you with elements but but the core still needs to be uh, defined isn't it yeah absolutely um and if you think about all the amazing leaders in the world um people don't follow them because they're told to they follow them because they want to mm -hmm. true True. And that's that that you can't fake. Yes, true. Yeah. Even the products which we are buying, isn't it? The one, uh, if you're talking about the women, you know, all this uh, stuff which we buy or even services, uh, we are choosing, I don't know, uh, uh, that person or, or that hairdresser or, or, or um, I don't know, that pharmacy where we go, uh, even the hotel, wherever we, we choose because the way how they are treating the clients. It's not because we are forced to, of course, we need to buy, but still having a choice uh, what and how and why we buy uh, those brands, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a very powerful thing in business, consumer choice, and don't ever underestimate it. <laughs> you know, the, the power that you have as an individual, you know, I, I believe there's a quote that it said, you know, never doubt change from one individual in fact that's the only thing that's ever created change in the world mm -hmm. and so all change in your life starts with you and how you understand yourself and the changes that you make and I think you know we're often conditioned into believing that you know we don't have power mm -hmm. but actually as individuals you have the ultimate power which is who you choose to be and what you choose to do and it all starts with what you think about life yeah absolutely so finishing our conversation with that statement is really bold and powerful because uh we are in power we we have a choice we have a voice to change the way like we do and uh even if it's coming to the branding uh piece we we have a choice so john it was very uh great to talk to you to tap into your wisdom to share with us um with audience uh the nuggets your journey uh and also pull through our conversation how the personal branding looks like the way how even we run that how you how you how we presented ourselves it's also even to look on that perspective as well. So, Joanna, thank you very much. Um, and uh, where people can find you, uh, we will use the link. Um, is it something which you would like to mention about the uh, um, Leadership Powerful Women, other organization which you lead, like upcoming events maybe? Sure. So uh, you, can, you can contact me through the website, just uh, thesuccessfulwoman.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. We'd love to connect with you. I'm heading over to the States to actually do uh, some work with the ladies over there. So I'm really excited. It's my first international trip since all the borders closed. So we're going to have some announcement about some really great things and some tools that we're going to be launching to help female founders. 
And we're also going to be launching a new community too. So we're going to be creating a fantastic community too um, for female entrepreneurs to connect with female founders. So yeah, really looking forward to, to that. So yeah, we'd love to support all of you. And, you know, I think just one takeaway is just enjoy the process, you know, have, have fun with it. You know, you don't have to have it perfect. Just get out and practice. Practice makes perfect. And, um, you know, just have the freedom to give yourself the permission to create it in your own way. And, you know, if you do that, it will be perfect for you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And looking forward to hearing from you more. Thank you. You're welcome. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, click the subscribe button so you can receive more content like this every week. If you want to keep developing yourself, check my recommended videos 